Six, seven, eight. This is chapter six. Every time a blackboard was to be cleaned or floor mopped, the raven was sure to put me to work doing it. I prayed that she would forget about me altogether, but her attentions only grew with the daylight hours. I returned to the dormitory one Saturday night in April after an evening of raven's education. She was not pleased with my silence at the radio station, and cleaning the nasty chicken coop was how she made me pay for it. My raw fingers stung as I opened the door to an explosion of excitement. Agnes was giddily twirling around her bed. She kicked up a leg to show me. New stockings, she chirped as I pulled my own slouching pair back up over my knees. Aren't they beautiful? I bet they belong to a fancy Toronto lady. Everyone's getting new stockings. Maybe the outsiders had come to their senses. I might just survive another winter of the raven's education if I could get my hands on some new stockings. I stripped off my old ones and threw them on the pile, praying for a nice black pair like Agnes's. I closed my eyes and waited my turn. The raven swooped in. I saved a special pair for you, she said. I stared. I closed my eyes again and slowly opened them wider and wider. I looked to the other girls and examined their stockings. Then I turned back to my own. The raven had played a heartless trick on me. Embarrassment and anger swelled in my heart. These stockings would never have belonged to a fancy lady from Toronto. They're, they're, they're red, I stammered. The raven cackled laughed as I ran to my bed beneath the window. It was bad enough that I was much larger than the other kids and that my calf muscles would, were fat, more pronounced than those of my skinny leg class, like classmates, but now I had to wear the only bright red stockings in the school. I pulled them on to see if they were really as bad as I thought. They were worse. The stockings made my legs look even bigger than they already were. I stared at my big fat red legs. I looked like a plump legged circus clown. The laughter of the other girls enveloped me. It wrapped a million fingers around me and would not let go. As soon as the raven was gone, I pulled my favorite book from underneath my pillow and imagined the raven in the role of the Queen of Hearts. The next morning, I crept into the refectory late, my calves on fire from the hideous stockings. A buzz filled the room and swarmed about the tables. I felt dizzy. Every eye was burning into my legs. I wanted to dissolve into my bowl of mush. Catherine turned and pointed. Fatty legs, she laughed, bits of food spilling from her mouth. Fatty face, I called back. The raven caught me by the ear. If you cannot eat nicely with the other children, maybe you would be happier tending to the dirty laundry for the rest of the week, she said. Now get going. There's a fire waiting for you. I could hardly will my feet to move under the weight of my big, fat, red legs. Knowing that everyone was getting a good look at them as I sidled down the aisle and out the door of the dining hall, my chest ached and I stirred the dirty laundry. A tear escaped my eye. It fell from my chin under the scalding cast iron vat. Psh! The tear bubbled and vanished with a poof of steam. Aha, I whispered in the moment. I knew how I would stop all this fatty leg business. I'd only to wait for my chance. For the next few days, the other girls made sounds like heavy beat of a drum when I walked by. Boom, 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 they called. They could go ahead and have their laugh at my expense. It would be short-lived. Although when they started calling Agnes skinny legs, it felt like sitting across the ice and walking home then and there. Catherine teased Agnes so mercilessly that one day for the first time, Agnes did not pick me to be the first on her team at recreation time. My resolve hardened. I could not lose my best friend. The time had come to put my plan into action. Each morning, as I pulled up my red stockings, my spirit rose. All I needed was opportunity. On Sunday, my last day in the laundry room, it came. I looked around to make sure I was alone. The raven usually went to her room after church to listen to the radio. And brother, who helped to stoke the fire, had gone out for a cigarette. 
I stripped off the stockings and in one quick motion shoved them into the blazing fire beneath the vat. The hideous things sizzled and crackled in the fire as they shrank before my eyes and vaporized into a thin wisp of smoke. I smiled with satisfaction. I would not be bested. The raven was about to find out that I was made of, and, and was she ever in for a shock? She flailed like a fish on the ice when she noticed my bare legs and threw her hands up in the air. How dare you enter the refectory without your stockings? You will be dressed appropriately at all times. Now go back and put them on this instant. I can't, I told her. And there's Margaret. The fire and the laundry in a big, big pot. And why not? I just can't. She could scream all she wanted to. It wouldn't bring them back. She rose from the table. Margaret, you go back to your room and get those stockings right now. They aren't there. Margaret Pokiak, her beady black eyes bore holes into me. I will find those stockings, rest assured. The hatchlings weren't giggling anymore. Everyone had to help in the search. We tore the crowded dorm room apart, scoured the whole school from top to bottom. We emptied our trunks and the nuns rummaged through her belongings. The raven had every girl strip her bedding and flip her mattress. You had better tell her where those stockings are, Catherine said to me. Nope. No one's going to call me fatty legs ever again. You think you're pretty brave, don't you? She leaned forward and fixed her eyes on me, but I wasn't scared of her. I stood my ground. You're ba brave, Margaret, says Sister McQuillan, stepping around the corner. Catherine moved away from me and rejoined the other Gwitchin girls. The swan handed me a key. Go and get your stockings from the storeroom. Agnes met my eyes from where she stood over the upturned mattress and smiled. It was time for lights out when I returned with the stockings. I would have to wait until the next morning to put them on. When morning came, I put on my beautiful, thick pair of grey wool stockings. They were gorgeous. After a chores and prayers, I ran back up to the dormitory, bursting with pride. I danced between the beds, whirling around for so long that I missed breakfast. I was eager to get to class on time, though. I sprang down the hallway like a grey-legged wolf. The raven choked on the claw she'd been nibbling as I strutted my sleek new legs past her desk. Her face turned as red as seal's blood on snow. Sister McQuillan stepped through the doorway and headed straight for the raven. She whispered something in her ear, and the raven blew up like a ptarmigan, which is a bird, balloon. Her ears nearly popped off. Then Sister McQuillan tilted her head gracefully in my direction. A faint smile crossed her lips. I knew the raven would no longer be free to educate me as much as she had been. The raven thought she was there to teach me a few things, but in the end, I think it was she who learned a lesson. Be careful what birds you choose to pluck from their nests. A wren can just be as clever as a raven. And that's the end of chapter six.